let's go on. So, so we've discussed the phones and, you know, the sort of ways that this is uh, warping people's minds. So let's talk about doom spending. So this is from British Vogue. What exactly is doom spending and how do I stop myself doing it? It's by Emily Chan from uh, about six weeks ago, February 14, Valentine's Day. Hey, uh, treat yourself right on Valentine's Day. Stop doom spending. So here's the article. We're all familiar with doom scrolling, but what about doom spending? Okay, it's a phenomenon that's afflicting millennials and Gen Zers who are... Un oh, I don't think it's just millennials and Gen Zers. I think there's a lot of older people that are just as susceptible to this as as anybody uh in fact i know a boomer that used to like uh spend all their money on fucking ebay but this was like back back in the dial-up days so yeah anyway um who are unsurprisingly overwhelmed by the multiple world crises that we're currently facing in many ways it's similar to the more familiar concept of retail therapy you know you buy stuff make you feel better make yourself feel better uh, and, th and then eventually you, you gear up to, you, you get to the decluttering stage. I've done too much retail therapy. Now I need decluttering therapy. Anyway, although the fears that we're trying to quell are arguably of a much greater scale than in the past. And I think people, you know, whether you're talking about uh, you watched too much news about Israel-Palestine or you have family there or, you know, climate change or whatever. Anyway, yeah, there's huge extinction level news to be worrying about now. Quote, when we buy something, our brain releases feel-good hormones like dopamine and endorphins. Iona Bain, founder of Youngish Money and the author of Own It, tells Vogue. Quote, shopping has always been an easy, low-effort way to self-soothe, and our consumer economy has long been predicated on making us believe that new purchases will lift our spirits and solve our problems. Why is doom spending on the rise? Nowadays, though, the rise of smartphones and social media, along with buy now, pay later schemes, which that was a huge thing over the holidays this year, as people have run out of the pandemic money and they're putting more and more things on credit. Actually, like we said before, consumer credit levels hitting all times, uh, all time highs, uh, makes it an even more dangerous habit to get into, particularly considering that 43 percent of millennials and 35 percent of Gen Z are now doom spending, according to a survey by the Credit Karma website. Quote, young people have always been susceptible to overspending because they struggle with peer pressure and identity formation, but they're now more vulnerable to commercial forces than ever because of the dire economic situation that they find themselves in, Bain explains. All too often, I've seen young people get into debt that blights their credit score, weighs them down mentally, and stops them from living full lives, unquote. And, you know, sometimes people do this because of, you know, thoughtless doom spending or like compulsive doom spending, but also people are racking up debt just trying to keep up with basic necessities, which is another issue. But buying new clothes is perhaps one of the most common ways that young people are doom spending. But if we're trying to numb ourselves from fears like the looming climate crisis, isn't it counterintuitive to continue purchasing new things? I mean, again, I think this is just the extent of coping. Sometimes people don't know what else to do. They just never learn those skills. After all, isn't that what got us here in the first place? It's a paradox explored by sustainability strategist Alec Leach in his aptly titled book, The World is on Fire, But We're Still Buying Shoes. Quote, fashion is an optimistic undertaking, he writes. It gives us the chance to envision new futures for ourselves, places where our current fears and burdens melt away. Considering that saving to buy a house feels so out of reach for so many millennials and Gen Zers, investing in luxury items, clearly still a privilege, is also a way of taking back a sense, however false, of control. Quote, doom spending is a display of what we call the passive to active flip, with the passive being the many things we may want to change in the world, but feel we cannot change, and the active being the buying of things. Dr. Dion Terrellong otherwise known as the fashion psychologist, explains. Of course, doom spending is never going to solve our problems, which is why so many people get trapped in an unhealthy cycle of constantly buying in search of instant gratification. Quote, if buying things truly made us whole, then we'd have stopped by now, Leach says. But because consumerism doesn't really satisfy our needs, we go around and around chasing trends, sleepwalking into regret purchases again and again. 
how to stop doom spending. So they do some things here. Um, they give some suggestions. Keep a spending diary. Set boundaries with your phone, which is, you can see why I did these uh, two articles back to back. Have a list of decoy activities, so free activities that can make you feel better instead, like going for a walk, going for a run, taking a bath, calling a friend, do some yoga, write, anyway, anything that takes you out of the buying zone. So yeah, you also might want to identify your top five priorities in your life. So like for me outside of work, they say it's healthy eating, exercise, rest, connection, and creativity. I try to make sure that all five are factored into my daily life, and that helps to take me away from mindless spending. And uh, also start saving little by little. I'm not even going to get into that because there's a lot of uh, complicated things about that. I mean, I think the even the best money management, I mean, it's not an excuse to like just squander your money, but even people who are very careful are still struggling. So, you know, but there, I guess there's levels of struggling like, you can struggle with $10,000 in the bank account, like you can have your six month emergency fund or whatever, or you can struggle without having it. But even trying to save that, you know, your 10 or $20,000 where you could survive a six month emergency, um, that's super difficult today. But if you're interested in uh, decoy activities, you can find this online. They're actually fairly commonplace in kind of health and wellness and psychology websites of like lists of pleasurable activities that, you know, are free and uh, are attainable for, for a lot of people that you can do instead of spending your money on stuff. Uh, engage in altruistic behavior is the last suggestion. So instead of doom spending, try investing in your community instead. You know, join a uh, Vanguard study group, for example. Now, let me say a lot of the activities that are put out there as activism may or may not be super effective. So you want to be critical about what you're investing in uh, as far as time-wise for your activities do things that really are you know gonna have some kind of tangible effect because there's a lot of stuff that um may or you know i think is designed to kind of eat up people's time without necessarily you know building anything or leading to real change so there there can be some uh some decoys there too 